back to uh, what are I, day number three. Day number three of the of the Traffic Secret uh, series. I'm going live every single day uh, for the next. I don't know. We're in quarantine. Well, as long as we want, as long as you guys are having fun, we'll keep doing this. Um, so if you are having fun, please let me know down in the comments. Be like, this is fun, Russell. We should do this more often. Or if you're like, I have better things to do with my day than sit in quarantine and listen to Russell talk about traffic. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments down below if you're having fun. Because so far, I'm enjoying this. And um, I'm not going to lie, it gives me a little bit of a break from all the other the stresses of all the stuff we do. So uh, I'm enjoying it. And uh, hopefully, you guys are having some fun as well. Um, as you guys know, oh, let me pull this over here so you can see it inside the screen. We are on day number two. Actually, it's been. Uh, in 20, in 26 minutes, it'll have been, uh, 24 hours that the book funnel has been live. Um, and a lot of you guys, since you're all my marketing, uh, my marketing nerds who like to hang out and talk marketing with me, um, the funnel is doing insanely well. We are just shy of 10,000 copies sold. I was trying to get 10,000 copies in the first 24 hours. It's probably gonna be 25, maybe 26 hours before you hit it, but that's still pretty dang good. Um, to put that in perspective, the average New York Times bestselling book only sells 10,000 copies the first week. So we are 10,000 copies in less than 24 hours, which means uh, this must be a book you guys are interested in. It must be a topic you're interested in. Uh, it's probably the most timely thing ever. It's interesting. I started this project two years ago, not knowing when this was going to go live, not knowing the circumstances. And now with, uh, you know, we're in the middle, for those who are depending on watching this live or later, uh, we're in day two or three of quarantine here. For the coronavirus which is crazy and businesses are freaking out and people are struggling and a lot of companies are shutting their doors. And right now, the thing I think that people need more than anything is traffic. It's people. How do you get th your dream customers, the right people, to come to your door so you can help them and so you can serve them? And so um, that's what this whole book's about. So uh, my goal is hopefully you guys all get a copy. Um, again, these don't ship until May 5th, um, but the audiobooks are there right now. In fact, uh, like 36% of you guys are buying the audiobooks. So thank you for that. Uh, but it gives you a chance to go and uh, start listening to it immediately. Um, but then I'm going live free here, and I'm just going to... Um, basically share stuff in the book. So um, if you want to see some of the old episodes um, uh, on Facebook, they're there, other places, YouTube, we got in there as well. Um, but basically, I'm going through the book and talking about it. So today, I'm going to dive back in. You guys want some more uh, some more insights from the book that hopefully help you out in whatever part of the journey you're in right now? Um, hopefully you do. And as you're reading this, you're like, all right, fine, Russell, you pushed me over the edge. I'm finally ready to get the book you've been talking about for two years. Just go to trafficsecrets.com. You'll see the funnel. And I would recommend going through the funnel slowly. This is the highest converting funnel I've ever done. And I've been doing this game for 15 years now. Um, so this was 15 years of like me testing and trying a bunch of things. And this is the, this is the, the, I talked about like funnel hacking. You know, I said that you can go through, get all the arrows in the back, like, um, try to figure your way out or see where people are, where they're at today and then model it. So right now, um, this is where my, my funnel's at and it's killing it. Uh, excuse me, we're averaging like 80, almost $80 for every free book we give away inside the funnel. So it's working, it's good. Um, anyway, so that's the game plan. You guys ready to jump into this? Should we have some fun? I love it. All right, okay, I'm gonna go. So here you go. Oh, I'm gonna open up the box set. And like you guys are like, yesterday on the, on the live, everyone's like, where did I get the box set? I'm like, the only place you get the box set is, is in an upsell. So you gotta buy the book and then the upsell is like, hey, do you want all the books? All the new hardbound copies and the workbook and everything. So um, that's the only way to get it. Uh, is after you go to trafficseekers.com and get a copy, your free copy of the book. I think it's $10 shipping and handling US for the hardbound. And then it's um, like nineteen ninety five, I think, international. So, and these will be shipping May 5th. This is a pre-launch. May 5th, these will start shipping. But the audio books that I recorded myself in a studio for three days are available. You can get them today. And um, yeah, so there you go. Plus all the other bonuses. There's five insane bonuses you guys get with the book as well. Um, the easy I could sell each of those for 97 bucks as a standalone product. You get them for free when you buy the book for free. So if you like free, then you should get a copy of the book. All right, with that said, I'm gonna go in here. So um, the first the first day I talked about, I just read kind of the, or read some stuff from the intro, which was all about um, basically a storm coming, which is interesting now that we're in like the middle of the storm, but there's a storm coming, traffic shifting, everything's, everything's different and you gotta prepare. Um, I was lucky enough and blessed enough when I started learning traffic. It wasn't um, when Facebook ads were here and I was like trying to figure out how to, you know, how to run Facebook ads. Like I, w I was learning this stuff um, before Facebook, before my, uh, before MySpace, before Friendster. I was learning how to drive traffic from some of the old, the the original OGs of direct response marketing. I was learning direct mail, radio, postcards, things like that. And as you apply these principles to the internet, it's really, really powerful. So if Facebook shuts down or your ads account ban or Google changes, um, this book is like, here's how to how to have a stable foundation to get traffic even in those times. Um, I've been lucky enough now to be doing this for 15 years and uh, I've been through a market, you know, a couple market grows, a couple market crashes, 
and um, I've seen networks come and go, Google Slaps, Facebook uh, Snaps, a whole bunch of stuff. And what's interesting is that we've we not only survived in those times, we've thrived, and it's because of the found, foundational principles you're going to learn here inside of Traffic Secrets. So uh, talking about storm coming, then I started going to chapter number one, your dream customer. Shared some cool stories from this uh, yesterday. I'm not going to go back into it, but uh, the whole key is becoming obsessed with your dream customer. You know, you better you understand them, you understand uh, like what are they doing to move towards pleasure and away from pain. It makes it so much easier to find them. So today we want to talk about are two things called the searcher and the scroller. When you have your book, if you go to page 25, is where I start talking about these concepts of the searcher and the scroller. Um, I think I got some doodles in here. Yeah, I got some doodles in here. So for those who are like me, like the doodles, there is the searcher and there's the scroller. Okay, that's important to understand because a lot of people think that traffic is just traffic. Like, oh, I just need to figure out how to get more traffic. And so that's kind of their, all they're looking for. But you understand um, the people's habits are different, right? And so there's the searcher and there's the scroller. And what's interesting, if you look at how business started back in the early 1800s, right? Uh, when did people buy something, right? They had a need for it. So like, oh, I need a hammer. They would go jump in the car, drive to the grocery store, and they would go buy a hammer. They're searching for something. Now, when you're searching, you know what you're looking for. Like, I need this thing to, to solve this problem, this thing. And so you're searching for it, and you go look for it, and you buy it, and you come back, okay? And for a long time, that's how business happened. Back in the early 1800s, early 1900s, was... 100% of commerce happened through through searching, right? Someone needed something, they went and searched for it, right? The yellow pages came, they'd search through the yellow pages, find the business, had the thing they need, oh, I need a plumber, find the person, they'd search for them, and they can go and get them. So what was nice for consumers was nice, I could go search, I could find the things I wanted, but as a business owner, it was tough because I couldn't I couldn't go and get people's attention, right? Um, and so uh, if, if you look at it, and I, t I share some of the timelines, like the first, uh, the first time the interruption, uh, oh, excuse me, so, yeah, I'll go into that in a second, but, but searching is the first thing, right? Um, and then, uh, but again, searching is good because you can go find exactly what you want. That's the pros of it. I think I have a list of the pros and the cons. Yeah, the pros for, for search is that when people come to you, they're hot, right? That's the thing. Like, I'm, search, I'm looking for a plumber. They call you like, I need a plumber. Like, sweet, I'm a plumber. I'm coming right over, right? Or I need a hammer. It's like, they're, they're hot. They're looking for it. So that's the pros of search. The cons is you can't stimulate that. I can't stimulate search and make you all of a sudden come search for me, right? And so that was kind of the, the cons of it. And so it was hard to really grow and scale a company because you're sitting there waiting for people to search for you, waiting for someone to get a desire, okay? Then fast forward to um, uh, 1927. So um, 1927 was the first, uh, is when tele TVs were invented. And uh, 15 years later, on July 1st, 1942, it was during the Brooklyn Dodgers-Philadelphia Phillies game at Ebbets Field. Uh, it was the first ever TV commercial aired, okay? So what happened, think about this. Um, people are sitting there, they're watching TV in their homes, they're being entertained, they're enjoying this thing, they're interested in baseball, they're watching baseball, and then in the middle of that, boom, they're interrupted with an ad, okay? And the, the ad was for Bulva watches, and Bulva, and think about before before this, if, someone, if Bulva wanted to sell a watch, what would they have to do? Right? They'd wait for someone who's like, I need a watch. And they'd go search for a watch. So they're like waiting. Like, Hopefully business comes to us. They'd wait. Right? Now, this first TV commercial in, in the early 1900s, um, people are sort of watching TV. They're not planning it. All of a sudden, in the middle of that ad, they're interrupted. Right? They're interrupted. And after they're interrupted, then comes in, uh, then comes in the, uh, the, the ad where it says, uh, the ad was nine seconds long. In fact, if you go to YouTube right now and search it, you can actually find it. Uh, I found it the other day. It's nine seconds long. It costs them $9 to run. And the ad said, America runs on Bulva time. Now, obviously, that ad was not the greatest ad in the world, but it was the ad. It was the first time someone did interruption marketing, right? So people watching baseball, so they interrupted, and Bulva had this little window of time where they could grab someone's attention, right? They could build up the perceived value, what it is they have to sell, and then they can make them an offer, right? And that was the very first time this interruption concept happened, okay? And interruption marketing is powerful because it gives you, because with search marketing, people have to be looking for you, right? They're, they're interested, they have a desire, they're looking for you. With interruption, you have a chance to, to capture their attention and then make a presentation to increase the perceived value of the thing that you're trying to sell and then you make them an offer. And in the book here, I'm gonna talk a little more about hook story offer uh, in a day or two, I don't know when we, when we get there. But that's the next framework is is when you interrupt somebody, you got this, this little window of time, right? So uh, I'm gonna sit down here because this is my studio, I'm sitting on the floor because that's what we got here when we're in quarantine. Uh, but I want you to understand that, like this, this is some of the interesting uh, interesting stuff. Like, And I have a friend, um, uh, his name's Trevor Chapman, and he's one that kind of first made this this concept live in my head, right? He talked about searching versus interruption. So search marketing, right? Um, let's say, for example, you wanted a new home security system, okay? So what would you do? You'd go on Amazon, type in home security system, you'd search for it, and if you found it, you're like, oh, I need a home security system, I'm looking for it, and right now you can get a pretty good home security system on Amazon for like 
200 bucks, right? You pay 200 bucks, it comes to you, you install it, and boom, you are have a home security system for 200 bucks, right? Because you are searching for it. Now, people that search, typically they're bargain shoppers. They're looking not just one place, they're searching five different things, they're price comparison, all these kind of things, right? But when they come to you, they're hot, right? They just, they're ready to buy right now, okay? Now, put that in contrast with what Trevor talked about. He talked about what he did. He ran a sales team, a door to door sales people selling uh, home security systems. He said, we didn't rely on search at all, we relied on uh, on interruption marketing. So, so what we do is we would go and we would we would uh, go door to door and we knock uh, on the door and we'd interrupt someone during dinner or you know whatever it is. We interrupt them, okay? And when we interrupt them. They open the door and we have this little window of time. First step is to hook them, to get their attention. We hook them, right? If we can get past the initial hook, then we have this, uh, this window of time where we can tell them a story. And the goal of the story is what? Is to increase the perceived value of the thing it is I'm going to sell. In the end, I have a chance to make an offer, okay? Now, two minutes earlier, that person was not looking for home security system, but because I interrupted them, I hooked them with something to got their attention, I told them a story to increase the perceived value, then I could sell the thing that I'm selling for what it's actually worth, right? Top, typically with search-based marketing, um, you're in a comparison game, right? It's the race to the bottom. You're selling commodities and people are searching for all the different variations to find the cheapest one with the best, with the highest ratings, right? Whereas interruption-based marketing, they're not searching everywhere else in the world. You're coming to them, you're interrupting them, you make, them a, you make a presentation about the perceived value, what it is you're selling, and then you can sell for whatever you want, right? And he talked about how when he was selling security systems, like someone could go on Amazon and find them for 200 bucks, but what we would do, we knock on the door, interrupt them, tell, the, tell our story, increase the perceived value, make them an offer, and walk out the door with a $5,000 contract for a home security system. Okay, that's the power of interruption marketing. It gives you the ability to find people who aren't in the moment needing it, but you create a desire in them to be able to go and sell the thing. Okay, and so what's interesting uh, is you start looking at the at online. Uh, the same the same trend happened throughout history, right? When when the internet first came out, um, there was what type of marketing? There was search, right? You'd go to Google and you'd search for something, and it was amazing because you could rank for the keywords, you make a bunch of money, uh, you could buy pay per click ads, but you only made money on people that were actually searching for you. Everybody else, you just missed out on on the opportunity, right? And so you uh, you lost that that money, okay? But it was a really good opportunity. Then a little while later, then all of a sudden the social networks started coming out, right? And the social networks happened, and then somewhere down the line, and I have the dates in here. Uh, but somewhere down the line is when Mark Zuckerberg introduced the Facebook ads platform, which was the very first real big play of interruption marketing, right? Someone would come in Facebook, right? And they're, they're hanging out with their friends, they're talking, they're being entertained, and then we're able to come in and interrupt them for a second, right? So you're scrolling through the ads, all of a sudden, boom, your ad comes. And if you do it right, this is like the, per, this is like the knock on the door for the door to door salesperson, right? You knock on the door, it interrupts them for a second, just long enough, you got their attention, right? You hook them. And then it opens up this little window for you where you can now tell them your story. And the goal of your story is to increase the perceived value of what you're going to sell them. And then you make them an offer. Hook, story, offer. Okay? And that's the power of interruption marketing. It gives you that little window of time where instead of like waiting for people, like, hey, I hope someone searched for uh, cat food today because I'm selling cat food. Instead of waiting and waiting, we're able to say, okay, who's interested in cats? Let me go find those people. And let me try to interrupt them. Let me go knock on their door. Let me go throw out these hooks and try to grab their attention just as long as I can explain to them why my cat food's so much better, my cat medicine, or my cat, whatever cat thing you sell. Um, tell them perceive value, tell them your story, increase the perceived value of something, and sell for what it's actually worth. Okay? Then you're not going out there and they're fighting and they're comparing your cat food versus 500 other people. You have the ability now to, um, to increase the perceived value and sell your thing for what it's worth. Okay? So that's search versus interruption. And if you start looking at all the different advertising networks out there, you start classifying, okay? So Google is a search platform, right? People are coming to search on it. Yahoo is a search platform. Uh, I don't even know what other ones are out there. I just use Google, but those are search platforms, right? Then you got uh, Facebook and Instagram. These are interruption platforms, right? They're, they're, they're getting people's attention. They're, they're categorizing people based on what they're interested in, and you have to really come and interrupt those people, saying, I want to interrupt all people interested in cats, all people interested in, in fitness, all people interested in business. I interrupt them. Right, and then it opens up this little window for you to come in there, set a hook to get the attention, tell them a story, increase the perceived value you have, and then make an offer. Okay, and that's the magic. Now, um, so the, then again, the first phase we talked about in this book here was you're taking your dream customers, and you're identifying, you're breaking them versus on people that are trying to move away from pleasure and people who are trying to move towards pain. Right, we have different messages for both those people. They are not the same. They are different. Right, so maybe we have different funnels, different landing pages, different ads. They're speaking differently to each person. The next thing is understanding uh, where am I going fishing? Where am I trying to find these people? If it's search based, that's okay, but I'm going to speak to those people differently. Those people are probably doing more comparison shopping. Those people are, are probably looking for a deal. They're 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 uh, they're researching, right? They're searching for you. They find you. So if my if my landing pages aren't based on like understanding, like hey, this is the mindset someone's coming to. They are they are researching. You're going to struggle, right? Now if someone's in in uh, 
in, in, in Instagram or Facebook, they're doing something else. I'm interrupting them. So I do something exciting. I have something cool. I have a cool background. I need something like this where they're scrolling through their seat. And it's like, what is this thing? Why is Russell waving a book? Like yesterday I had my, my Thanos. I had these gloves on yesterday, right? Because when the videos are on Facebook and Google, I want someone to scroll through like, why has Russell got this weird glove? And they're going to stop, right? I hooked them just long enough to have a chance now to tell them my story, to increase the perceived value of what I'm doing, and then make them an offer. Okay, by the way, BTW, those who are watching this video on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you are, what did I just do? I hooked you, right? I've been telling you a story to increase the perceived value of the offer I have for you, right? Some of you guys are like, dang, that's in the book. That's in, that's in se secret number one in the book. That's awesome. I need that. So I just told you a story to increase the perceived value of this thing that I'm going to offer you here in a second, right? Wait, Russell, you practice what you preach? Yes, I do every day, okay? So that's what I'm doing, right? Now, if I'm putting this out to a search audience, it's going to be different. Okay, my message is not going to be me with a Thanos love trying to interrupt him because they're, they're already looking. They're looking for like how to get more traffic. I'm going to come and be like, hey, here's a review page. Like, here's five new five ways to get traffic. Boom, boom, boom. By the way, number one book to get traffic is this book right here. You should go get it for free at trafficseekers.com. Right? I'm speaking to them differently. So you're categorizing people based on uh, search versus versus interruption. Okay, and understanding your ad campaigns, your structure, all the things you're doing are different depending on which which way people are coming into your world. Does that make sense? Okay, I think so many times people loop like traffic or advertising to like just one thing. It's like, no, you guys are understanding the intricacies of, of what you're doing, right? And so um, I need to understand if I'm speaking to someone who's searching versus someone who I'm interrupting because it's different. My ad's different. Okay, my ad on my Google ad is not me running around going crazy or lighting my book on fire, right? But my ad on Instagram is, my ad on Facebook is I got to grab your attention just long enough to open a window so you will listen to my story so I can increase the perceived value of what I have to sell and I can make you an offer, okay? Um, and I start thinking, you guys start thinking in your mind like, oh my gosh, I've seen this over and over again. When I go to Google, I search for stuff. What do the landing pages look like? The people are successful. What are those ads looking? What are they saying? How are they speaking to me, right? I'm speaking to them differently than I'm speaking to somebody who I'm interrupting, right? If I'm interrupting, uh, I'm doing crazy videos, trying to capture your attention, trying to get you to like focus and just long enough I can grab you, grab your attention and then tell you a story, okay? Um, so that's the key that I want you to understand. There's a little different, a little like slight intricacies, a little slight differences, uh, but it's the key to this whole, this whole game. Um, uh, oh yeah. Okay. So, uh, Google is a search platform, right? YouTube's interesting because YouTube is a search, but it's also a social. So YouTube is one of my favorites. And there's a whole chapter here going deep into YouTube because it, it's, it's a search and it's a, and it's an interruption platform. And so there's different strategies when you're inside of that, which are kind of fun. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, are interruption platforms, uh, other search based platforms like Quora, where you're going to, you're searching questions, you're answering questions. Like, like that's a search based platform. So as you start looking at there, where to get traffic, and you start thinking through this in your mind, realize there's search-based, interruption-based, two different things, and it's uh, important because that's some of the foundational stuff you gotta understand as you're going after your dream customer. So that, again, yesterday's video, and today's is all just um, secret number one. We haven't got secret number two yet. So um, let me come back real quick. Uh, so secret number one, so I, read, I did introduction day number one. Uh, yesterday, or today and yesterday was who's your dream customer, uh, and then today I talked about searcher versus scroller. You see that in the video there? Um, tomorrow's video, I'm gonna go into secret number two. Where are they hiding? So depending on if this is live, look for this tomorrow. If this is on YouTube or on a playlist, like there's probably a playlist here, we can watch the next one. Um, but after we're gonna go into next is, where are they hiding the Dream 100? Now, really quick, now that I've grabbed your attention, I've told you a value, increase the perceived value of this book, hopefully, now I'm hoping you want a copy of this so badly. So if you want one, guess what? Right now during pre-launch, they are free. Uh, you just got to cover the shipping and handling. This is the hardbound book. I've already paid for the printing of this thing. They are not cheap to print, so I pay for the printing. Um, they are going to be shipping out on May 5th. Right now we are in pre-launch. We've almost sold 10,000 copies the first 24 hours, which is crazy. Uh, really proud of that. Um, proof of these traffic things we're talking about actually work. Um, but you can get a copy right now uh, at trafficseekers.com during the pre-launch. Again, we ship these May 5th, but uh, when you're buying this, uh, one of the order form bumps as you go through the funnel is for the audio book. The audiobook is done. I spent three days in a warehouse, or not a warehouse, in a studio, reading this entire book. You can get the audiobook immediately. Uh, and inside the audiobook, there's actually links to um, to a supplemental PDF that has all the doodles and stuff. So as you're listening, you can look at the doodles and make sure you understand the concepts. Uh, that's available today. You can start listening to the audiobook right now. Like, you just got to go to trapthesecrets.com, get a copy of the book. This ships May 5th. And then uh, the order form bump is the, uh, the audiobook. So you can listen to it, uh, which is awesome. And right now, like 36% of you guys are taking the audiobook. So... That means that one third of you guys are ready to listen today. And the rest of you is like, I'll listen to all about traffic in, in the future. But honestly, right now we're in scary times. I mean, I'm in quarantine now. I'm sure most of you guys are in quarantine. We're in our house hanging out. I'm recording this on my phone and my iPad because my my film crews are in quarantine everywhere. Like it's it's chaos right now. But you got to understand the most important thing in business for all of you guys, 
um, in good times and in bad, is traffic. It's the people. It's giving you having the ability to be to get your message in front of people. If you're not able to do that, it makes business really hard. If you are able to do that, it makes business easy. So how do you get traffic? Not just how do you get any traffic. How do you get? If you look at the subheadline here. It says the underground playbook for filling your websites uh, and funnels with your dream customers. Not just any customers. Your dream customers. The ones that have money. The ones that can afford your products. Can afford your services. The ones you actually want to serve. And so that's the game plan, you guys. That's traffic secrets. Now it's time to get yours at trafficsecrets.com. Um, someone said they ordered the book but never got a confirmation email. Uh, I'd look in your junk folder. Email is like the least reliable thing on this planet. I hate email. I wish someone would make something better than that. So, um, all right. Oh, someone's asking how much is the book? So, uh, the box, the first upsell is the box set. Uh, if you want the entire box set, I won't spoil it for you, but when you go through the funnel, uh, if you, when you buy the Traffic Secrets book, uh, the upsell is to get the whole box set. Uh, the box has got .com Secrets book, the Expert Secrets book, the Traffic Secrets, all hardbound, uh, and these have all been updated. Um, I added over 30,000 words to each of these books uh, before the, the new hardbound versions came out. So these are all three newest versions. And also this is the Unlock Secrets workbook. It's a 600 page workbook that comes with it. If you want this huge box set, uh, it is the upsell at trafficsecrets.com. But you gotta get the book to be able to see the offer for the whole thing. So um, I recommend getting it because it's, it's awesome. So. Um, Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Um, while you're uh, at home or doing your thing, uh, just remember that uh, this is not a time to hide and do nothing. This is a time to serve your audience at a higher level. Go live. Tell your story. Tell your message. Give people a message of faith and hope. Don't stop selling things. Don't stop promoting. Like uh, If the economy – like the, the best thing for the economy is for us entrepreneurs to keep doing what we're doing. If we stop all commerce from happening, this is horrible for the economy. Um, it's, it's what it's, it's literally like the scariest thing for me personally is not the, this variety of this virus. It's the economic reper reper repercussions of it. And our job as entrepreneurs is to keep, um, doing what we're doing. Um, if we stop, the economy will, will stop. And that's when it gets really, really, really scary. So, um, yeah, keep, keep producing. You guys keep publishing. I've been talking about this for years and you'll get, as you get deeper in Travis Secrets book, um, one of the things I'm going to challenge everyone is publish every day for a year, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, platform, YouTube, I don't care, pick a platform and continually publish every single day for a year. And if you do that, you'll have no more financial troubles in the year from now. Uh, but you got to be consistent and start publishing. So I'm going to publish every day. Every day I'm going to be reading parts of, uh, of the, the books for you. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed today. Got some ideas out of it. And I'll be back tomorrow with the next um, the next chapter, secret number two we're going into, you guys. Uh, so between now and then, go get your copy of the book, trafficsecrets.com. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys all again very, very soon. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you all. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.